Ladies and gentlemen, please celebrate with me. Odwayo Eweni. Woo! Continue. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it by now. Welcome. Hi, can you hear me? Okay, hi, good morning. It's so nice to be here. <laughs> so, um, I'll get right into it. I've been told I have only 15 minutes. I just wanted to say how incredibly amazing it is to be speaking to a room that's 99.9 .9 women. That, that almost, almost never happens in tech. I'm sure we're all aware of it. So it's so nice to be with you this morning. Thank you so much to Shikode Africa for having me. Um, so today I'm speaking about elevating the African women in tech, uh, but I decided to go at it a slightly different way. So how do we win? Right, um, I've worked in tech since 2013. Right out of university, my friends and I started our first company and We've basically been working together now for 12 years, but actively in tech for nine years. In that time, I've been privy and opportuned to kind of see the massive amount of growth that our involvement in tech has kind of become. In 2013, I can tell you 100% there was nothing like this. If you tried to have a women in tech event, we'd be maybe exactly 25 people. Today, I'm speaking to a room of over 100 people, and I think that's really important. And that's a lot of progress. So well done to Ada and the rest of the team. This is amazing. So I'm just going to jump right into it. Um, I'm just talking about the progress that we've been making in tech. But as of today, there's been an 83% increase in the amount of funding that's going to female founders in tech. I know because in 2013, when I raised $1.1 million for PiggyVest, it was record breaking because in the world, there were 36 black women that had raised $1 million. Yesterday, the founder of Topicals has become the youngest black woman to raise $10 million for her own business. That's progress. So now, we're seeing 12 to 23% deal flow activity change for female founders between 2010 and 2019. Now, this is all you know, about female founders, but there is just kind of like, how do we move the participation of women in tech? Look. The truth is, no matter how much money we're funneling into tech, you know, and the increase in women winning, without deliberate effort, most women still won't win. And I'll explain, right? Realistically, uh, we see, you know, they're announcing funding. Look, 23% of deal flow activity, 36% of female founders as a percentage of total founders. We'll get there. 80%, 60, 64%, 98%. 1% 60, 60, of deal flow activity for us, 13% for us as black founders, whether male or female. 80% of firms don't still have a black partner. 61% of firms don't have a female partner. Every single one of you in this room is a potential founder. It's supposed to help us boost this 61% figure. We need representation. I'm going to get to how now. So those are all like the really dire, abysmal facts that we have problems and they all exist. But how do we make sure that they go away? How do we make sure that the person who's in this room today who is a student of biochemistry but wants to become a program manager at Microsoft has a path towards it? Now, challenging harmful fallacies about women. How many of us have heard that women don't support women? How many of us think that's true? Exactly. So you see, <laughs> every time people say, you know, women don't support women, you know, female friendships aren't genuine, women want other women, but I don't think that's true at all. As evidenced by the fact that SheCode has grown from a small community to one that's gathering women from across Africa, from the fact that they're giving laptops to enable people to learn, from the fact that every single day we're seeing a female founder and a female mentor talking up the people that are like, close to them. Look, the results are all that matter. It doesn't matter what people believe. We need to always be able to speak out and challenge it. In 2021, in January, myself and Eloho started First Check Africa as a way to funnel money towards women in tech. 
If we leave those beliefs unchallenged, that's all people will remember. If we leave those, people will tell you, you know, like, we're not supporting them. If you want to invest in women, invest in them. If you want women to raise money, then you have to create the opportunities. And then when we do, they complain, say, oh, you're discriminatory. Why are you not creating those kind of opportunities for men? But the truth is, we're still in the minority. As of today, when you're trying to count the female founders on your hand, or when you look in a team, for instance, every time people are telling you, boost the representation. So when we started Piggy Vest in 2000, I think 2016, we had a conversation around, we're going to make this company equitable. And then I remember in 2020, we went on a company retreat. Piggy Vest is about 55% female. And when we released our photos, people started asking us, so where are the men? And that, I thought that was a very weird question because you guys said hire women and now we have. But now you, you're asking us, where are the men? But they're there. But women deserve to always be there as well. We make up 51% of the world's population. Women are smart, women are building, women are in tech. And we need to always remember that, right? At the core of it, the results are all that matter. When I was growing up, my dad said to me, look, before you start any journey, you need to know who you are where you're going, and why you're doing it. For every one of you in this room, do you understand your why? Why are you here? Why do you want to be in tech? Why have you chosen to be here on a Saturday morning? Where are you headed? And who are you? The results are all that the world will see. The journey is hardly ever important to most people. The results are all that matter. What are you doing to make sure that when we gather here again next year, where you are today isn't where you are in the next 12 months? How do you move? Don't be afraid to rock the boat. Um, how, many, okay, how many of you follow me on Twitter? You've seen my Twitter account? Is it always fighting? Okay. So <laughs> in, in the middle of like, all of these things, one of the things that I've realized is that when people give women opportunities, you're expected to be what? Grateful. To be happy that you're there. To just like enjoy it. Don't change things. You know, don't speak too much out of turn. Right? I think that there's a lot that we could be teaching you. But personally, I think that women are over-mentored. I think that we don't speak enough. I think that a lot of people have you know, spent quite a bit of time trying to teach us how to be. And not a lot of time listening to what we actually have to say. In my experience, actually listening to the target market actually listening to women, actually listening to the minorities has always been the only way to make a change, to make solutions. So I encourage you today, take up space, be selfish, and be loud, right? When I was growing up, people would say, oh, don't I, you are too loud. But I'm loud and I'm now speaking in front of thousands of people. That's how these things work. Be, just be who you are. Right? Don't let people shrink you. Don't be grateful for being there. Every single room that a woman walks into, she belongs there. You belong here. And you belong wherever you want to be. And I think it's really important that anything else you take from here, understand that the tech ecosystem is as much for us as it is for anybody else. Great results will be achieved when conditions are equitable. Like I mentioned, my company is 55% female. It's not because I said, let's hire only women. It's because we want to create a space that women can thrive in. We want to create a space where everybody feels heard. And Piggy Best has grown. We don't have a lot of money. We've not raised a lot of money. But Piggy Best is one of the largest fintech companies in Nigeria today because voices are heard. I insist that the people are what makes the business. You make the business. You make the community. At every point in time, you make your own journey. You make the results, and I think it's important to always remember that. Now, bias must be removed. How many of us believe that there's still a conscious bias towards women in tech? How many of us have experienced it? Okay, everyone, obviously. So, one of the things that I like, love to talk about is conscious and unconscious biases. Everyone has them, whether you believe it or not. I, for instance, sometimes find myself, it's like, when we're interviewing for a role, I'm optimizing for we must have 50% women on the short list, right? Because I want to be able to pick. But I think that, generally speaking, we all must be aware of our biases. Inherently, just like anger is not a bad thing, just like depending on what you use it for. Jealousy is not a bad emotion. I don't think biases are terrible, right? Everyone has a bias. You're biased towards something or to something. Now, do you let that bias hinder like, people from participating? 
Do you let that bias hinder people from achieving the best? What we've seen, right, is that people hire people who look like them. And today, every woman who's in this room, every woman who's already an executive, you have a responsibility to hold the door open for the people coming after you. That's the bias that we need to actually be fighting. You know, when, when you get to a position as a woman, then you're trying to overcorrect for, I don't want to just hire women. But why not? The reason that women are behind is because there is a veritable men's club everywhere, no matter what anybody says. You are predisposed to giving opportunities to the people that look like you. And when the people that look like you are few and far between in a room, you have a responsibility, every single person, to hold the door open for the people coming after you. Now, you didn't ask for it, I'll tell you that. Like, no one is responsible. Like, it's not like, oh, you were born and now you must do it. But I believe that to achieve the kind of representation that we want, to achieve the kind of representation that gathers us here every year, to achieve that representation, we must be holding the door open for the people that come after us. Opportunities are important in tech, in, com in commerce, in banking, in Web3. There is sexism everywhere. And we have a responsibility for consciously helping to overcome that bias. Look, the truth, there will not be women in the room if other women don't start to speak up for them. You can gather all you want, but the, the action, you know, the results are always in the doing. The results are in the recommending a fellow woman for an opportunity. The results are in making sure that when you come up, you don't do it alone. Women must give women chances. I don't think I even need to say more about this. Now, be biased when it doesn't affect the results. Yes, right? I've seen when, like, um, we know a bit about funding rounds in this room, don't we? You know, people are raising pre-seed, people are raising seed, and people are raising giant series A's, and a bunch of people are closing all these deals on WhatsApp. Right? I've seen someone raise $500,000 within a WhatsApp group. I've seen people do it. But when it's time to raise for women, we have so many questions. You know, you know, what happens to this, what happens to that? We need to be kinder and to give grace to ourselves. One of the ways that I've come up personally is for people, is through people who speak for me when I'm not in the room. Who speaks for you when you're not in the room? And who do you speak for when you're, when you're in the room? Right? It's very important to make sure that you have a veritable list of people that you're recommending for opportunities. And when you can, that list should at least be 50% of your own peers. We deserve it. Women will be better than men. Eh. <laughs> so, <laughs> look, I don't, I, <laughs> right, okay, I'm going to move on from that. We will. And the reason why we will is this, right? One of the things that I've realized is that Every time we talk about giving opportunities to women, people always assume that we mean give opportunities to people that are not qualified. Have you seen that? Yeah. There is an inherent like, thought that when you say equality, it means that we're asking you to dip the quality. We're not asking you to lower your standards. We're telling you that women exist that meet those standards. Right? There was a time I was on a space, and I was talking about the lack of funding to women. And someone said, well, women have to do better at networking. Women have to do better at this. But we don't, because men don't have to. People should be able to get funded just because they have ideas. People should be able to get funded just because they deserve it. We should get jobs just because we're qualified, not because we're extra. Everyone expects you as a woman to be perfect, if not close to it. Right? We've seen everything that's going on in the crypto space. If we are all hearing about FTX. Like, can any of you kind of like cast your mind to if that was a female founder? You, you, you saw what happened with the founder of Away. She was tough on her team, and she no longer has a job. But people are raising money over League of Legends, and when it's our turn, we pitch 7, 14, 28 times to get funding. We need to dispel of that notion that we need to be perfect or close to perfect to raise, where people multi-dimensional people, when we aspire, like, and this is a thing that applies to every single woman, because there is this, um, there's this notion that we've all, all kind of internalized, that there isn't space for many women at the top. So we, you know, we strive for exceptionalism. And then we think by being exceptional, we're better than the people who perceptively are not. The truth is, you're not. You're not better than the woman who isn't exceptional. 
because exceptional is highly subjective. And so we must, as a matter of principle, understand that people can just be. We, like anyone else, are multidimensional people. We have our own bad side, we have our own good side. We have things we're good at, we have things we're bad at. And that doesn't mean, and that doesn't give a reason for you not to excel. Opportunities are given to all kinds of people. They shouldn't be given to one kind of woman. Right? We're many, we're different, varying. And that's how you like, gather diverse people in the room. Imagine if everybody in here just kind of looked like me and I was just talking to a sea of myself. What would be the point? Right? Diversity of thought, diversity of experiences, diversity of process. We need that to be able to form a colorful ecosystem, one that reflects every single person in this room. There's Christians here, there's Muslims, there's people wearing hijabs, there's people who are not, there's people who wear glasses, there's people who don't. That's exactly how we need to approach that, just like the individuality of the woman in tech. We don't win if we're monolithic. We win as who we are. Now, oh yeah, so this is what I'm trying to explain. We don't need to be exceptional to thrive. We just need to want to be there and want to do the work. Increasing the pipeline of women in tech, right? So um, I think I don't have to explain this too much just because I think the people who organize this event have done a fantastic job of kind of reaching out. Secondary schools, university campuses, workshop and conferences, one like the one that we're at today. And finally, mentorship by exp exposure. I believe that women need to be funded and not advised. I think we're over-mentored and underfunded. I think that there is a lot that needs to be done to funnel finances and resources and computers and everything else we need versus trying to teach us soft skills all the time. People are constantly trying to tell you, here's how to network, here's how to communicate, here's how to, here's how to, here's how to. And then there isn't enough of the doing after, you know, this is why um, at some point we stopped acceler um, attending accelerator programs, because then they'll teach you the soft skills, but they won't give you the funding, but you need that. To make any kind of progress, we need that resource. We need the resources. Organizations like this deserve to be funded so that they can continue to do good work for people who want to learn. There needs to be a veritable pipeline from secondary school directly into internships, directly into the tech ecosystem. We need to just do more of that. Women need to be challenged and not advised. In the same vein, give us the work, we'll do it, versus advising us all the time. I think it's like enough of the condescension on, this is how I think you should approach it, versus here's a task, do it and let's see the results. How will we know our efforts are working? Consistent participation in the lower levels of the tech ladder. We need to be able to see women winning from the ground up, right? Um, before, uh, if you looked at any company's customer service department, it would be all women, no men, right? Now, I'm hearing people saying, why are almost all product managers women? And then, you know, ex okay, so you see? And you know what? That's progress. And now we're seeing people who were formerly COOs of companies becoming the CEOs of their own companies, right? There's Clara of Credrails, right? There's the now current CEO of Joomba. There's so many people now doing so many amazing things. And do you know why? The entry point for most of these people was what? Customer service. There is a story I love to tell, Teju Adeyinka, who used to work at Helicarrier, who's one of the most vocal voices in the crypto space, right? Teju started as an EA to a CEO in tech. And now, if you're thinking of women in Web3, she's probably top five in the Nigerian tech ecosystem. That's the kind of pipeline that we need. That's the kind of pipeline that we need to be building. Equal participation will happen, but it won't be quick. Like I mentioned at the beginning, realistically speaking, we want women to win, but the knowledge that most women will not win without significant effort is how and what we need to be driving. I love the dreams of all of us imagining that 51% of something will eventually be women, but we must always keep our two feet on the ground. It's important to understand that the only way we win is to work at it. The only way we win is to take up that space. The only way we win is to make sure that everything else I've spoken about is in place. If not, we don't win, right? No one is going to ever hand you the space. You're going to have to always Take it. 30.8% to 32.9% of female workforce representation in tech. We need to get that to 51%, one way or another. 
Today's juniors are tomorrow's seniors. We agree, don't we? Yeah. And so, you know what? For me... <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you guys so much for listening. For me, I think that it's really important for us to say the, like really dreamy, really sweet things about where we want to be and what we want to see. But I also think that more importantly is us looking at each other and being realistic about how much work it takes to get there, right? We are, the, the progress that we've made in the past nine years has been extremely hard won, but the progress that we make in the, ten, in the next 10 years will be harder because always the minority is always going against the establishment. We are trying to change the way things have worked for thousands of years, right? If you want to change that, there must be work. Now, um, I know that they were giving away laptops, and I got a gift yesterday, and I thought someone here might deserve it more. So, I would... You see? <laughs> now, I, I would love to be able to give this out myself, but you guys are many. So I'm going to hand it to the organizers and they will find who is the most deserving person for it. Thank you so much.